Sunday, I had the opportunity to attend a luncheon at the Hotel Zaza for Compassionate Houston. And I encourage all the council members to look into this because this is a fantastic program of citizens coming together to make Houston a compassionate city. There are a few cities who have uh, become this way, but the city of Louisville has uh, challenged us to see if we will become a compassionate city. There are 10 steps, and I know that we can do this. What does Compassion City Houston mean? It means that we're compassionate in our business community. We, have, we try to mentor small businesses and make sure that they have an opportunity to work with larger businesses uh, to be successful. It means an educational system with compassion as far as when it comes to making sure that our children all have a good education and that we take the long road, we, we take the time out to make sure that the tutorials that they need them are there. This is a group of citizens who've come together to say that we're going to spend our time and our money to make this happen. We also want to see us uh, all doing good things, compassionate government. Compassionate government meaning that as we make our decisions, it's not sometimes some people may think it's all about the money, but it's about the compassion that we have for one another and the concerns we listen to on Tuesdays when they come to speak to us before council and how that we will receive them and listen to them and try to help them. Also, a few days ago, I had a chance to tour Bush and come to the airport and see all the facilities there uh, out at the airport. And I had a chance to, uh, I missed the, the tons of flight when it came into Houston, but I was fortunate to be able to, the plane was in at the airport and I was able to get on it and tour it, and I even took a picture in the cockpit. So that was a great chance for me there. Being an old Air Force guy, you know, I have to go back and remember. I was taking my, my staff to all of the airports and just, I was giddy as a little kid in, in a candy shop because I was just happy to be back in that atmosphere again. At the same time, a few days later, we went to the 1940 Airport Museum over at Hobby Airport. And there the history was. Uh, just in order to see this, we would like to see this airport really become, this museum, really become a display for all of our children to understand exactly what it's needed. They need a floor, not that we're going to give it to them, but if anyone wants to donate, they need a floor for the children's area where they're going to have a simulator, flight simulator, as well as a control tower. And I'm saying for little three-year-olds and four-year-olds, the floor has to be soft enough for them that they were to fall, that they wouldn't hurt themselves. One of those rubbery-like floors or whatever. And they're having a problem finding that material, but I hope to be able to steer them in the right direction to find it. But I'm involved in that. I'm involved in it because it is good for our children. It is good for our history, preserving the history of flight in Houston, Texas. And when you go out there and you visit with it, you get a chance to see how it uses its play and everyone else, TTI, TTA, and all the different airlines that were here in Houston in the beginning, Braniff, going into Continental, and, and so on and so forth. You get a chance to see your flight history. And I would encourage everyone to go out and visit the 1940 Flight Museum. It is a, it is a very educational experience. And then to go and see the actual um, galley that Lady Bird Johnson used this in there in the airport museum. You see what all the amenities that they had at that time when she was on her plane, her flights, uh, to see the old crews and the uniforms and things of that nature. There, thank you, Mary.